Welcome to part two of my world base tour for Enigmatica 2 Expert. I've changed base locations. Um, this is the same world I made my first video and little basic tips. Um, I was down in the Badlands near the nuclear wasteland here, and I decided to start fresh on this magical island that you can't tell is an island. The Blood Magic Box. What I have here is... Uh, a processor that kind of runs a basic uh, blood altar program for me and uh, it's not great or like efficient or anything but it does what it what I need it to do uh, but basically I use it to interface with these buttons even though these don't look like buttons this is a button and these are buttons they're just glitched out by the uh, the shaders that I'm using which is also new I forget if I mentioned that but uh, Took me a little while to get shaders working on this on this mod pack, but eventually I got there. And this is a status screen. So what's basically going on for this system is uh, I got a blood altar right now that's basically empty because I let it run dry. And uh, there's a cursed earth spawner down here with lamps to turn it off if needed and uh, a well of suffering up top. And the whole point of this is to add blood to generate lava from this ritual. And this lava, I will later show, runs my steam turbines. There's some monitoring going on, like as long as my blood magic's at uh, around 12 or 10, the redstone signal from blood, right now it's zero. The well of suffering is off and mobs are spawning. Or the well of suffering lamp is off, so mobs can spawn. So everything's running right now. It's just trying to catch up, because again, I, I let this all run dry. Um, I got two other rituals here. I have a Fractured Crystal Ritual and a Forsaken Souls Ritual. And between those two blocks, they're, um, you can control them with redstone. I have a node from RF Tools Control actually between the two rituals. And here's my donut, another Cursed Earth Spawner with uh, redstone lamps. What that lets me do is uh, run a ritual that breaks these crystals. They get sucked over here. The demon crucible, the demon will crucible, puts the aurora or the uh, demon will back into the uh, chunk aurora, and then it lets stuff grow. It lets these grow, which is another ritual required in this pack for these different types of clusters. I guess after talking about the uh, lava ritual, it would make sense to show off the heat exchanger from Advanced Generation. Um, of course, my whole system is empty of power right now, so everything's running. But the lava would come into here, get converted into uh, steam, make some obsidian, nice infinite obsidian, and uh, the turbines run. And what's different about my base is I try to do a lot of redstone control. So if a machine's not needed, it gets turned off, and I feel like it helps with lag. So my world typically runs about 12 milliseconds, and I always want to keep it around there, and the TPS at 20 obviously. Um, anytime my, my um, tick time gets to about 20 or 30 here, it starts to get kind of choppy and laggy. So uh, I try to be really careful. And um, that's what I was going to show off here with these turbines is I got two of them. It's not maybe the most efficient setup at all, but uh, it works for what I need right now. Weird rendering glitch. But everything's hooked up to this redstone. Um, the generator turns on from the redstone and so do the turbines. And what I've got going on here is my favorite block. I use it like a dozen times in the base, but it's looking at slot zero. So as long as there's an item in slot zero in this ender chest, it will run. So I've got a fish in here called steam turbine, and it's going to, as soon as it's there, this thing runs. Then I've got something here called cloches, which turns off the uh, immersive engineer cloches for growing things, because it's such a power hungry machine that uh, I like to turn it off when my base is low on power. So if we look at this power cell, everything in the base is uh, controlled off of ID1. So what happens is the turbines um, will be off and the power will drop. And once it gets to about a third, everything turns back on and it fills until it gets to 90 and then everything shuts off again. This is just some basic automation. I've got droppers with AE2 so I can request these. There's better ways to make this, obviously. You can actually grow this stuff, mystical agriculture in this pack, but I always thought this was kind of cool. 
this was kind of cool. Um, right now it's disabled by redstone because there's that redstone piece of dust there from this setup. But what I can actually do is I can type in cloche, which I use a lot of these. I can ask for it. And what it does is it sends, if the system's online, what happened here? That's not good. Oh, it was making that component. That's why it took a while. So now it's not disabled anymore. It's got the sand, the four pieces to make this recipe, and it's slowly heating up. So this slot here is actually slot, slot three. So this inventory checker looks at slot three, toggles this proxy, block updater proxy from Axnet, toggles the torch, which toggles this piece of redstone that you can't see beneath it. Really handy, this thing acts as a full block. And it's nice and compact, so it disables or undisables it. Enables it, I guess would be the right word. <laughs> Talking about the turbine control, the red chest here. This is actually what controls it. So here was my turbine fish and here's my cloche fish. So what happens here with this controls program and the fish, of course, hang out in this inventory. But uh, I've only got a couple machines controlled by it. Basically, I get a percentage reading of how much power I have and then the cloches either turn off or uh, on if needed and then turbines can start and stop as needed. And the actual program is kind of simple. It's neat. I guess is the better way of putting it. Um, it looks up at this power cell, which of course everything is on ID1. And I guess I gotta look down here. It gets a reading of what's in the machine, the power cell, and then it stores it to a variable. As you can see here, we get a max reading. We do some math, do some percentages times by 100. And of course we write it to the screen and then we go to the next command, which is signal cloche, which happens to be this one. I've since disabled whatever this one was doing. Basically what this does is it checks the percentage of power. And if I have less than 50, it moves the fish out to stop the machine and vice versa to turn it on. And same with the turbines. Based on my power level, it will move a fish to start it or stop it. And I've got these two symbols here that kind of create a bit of a buffer zone, a hysteresis zone where um, it doesn't act because I don't want the power system flickering on and off based on one level. Below 50, it turns on and above 90 it turns off. So that's kind of cool. I have an ore excavator from Immersive Engineering, and if I enable it, you'll start seeing bauxite, aluminum and rutile ore that come in, and they get dumped to this machine, this machine, and this machine array to purify, crush, enrich, and then the final product goes to these three smelters, and then through this ender chest they go back to the E2 system but of course, I don't need aluminum right now or rutile ore, so that's turned off. And um, this fish is for the void ore miner. And it's a little slower because it doesn't have any upgrades, but you'll see tin coming in. And then this, of course, is the void resource miner, which was running earlier today, which filled all this up. And um, I need to clean this up. But the whole idea behind this is if this is the, the stuff that's coming into my system and if it backs up, it would fill and it would turn off. If, like if this was running right now and this was to fill up and back up, it would actually auto shut off. And the whole idea is it's like an overflow protection thing. So um, these systems just start turning off if things are backing up. And um, eventually I'm going to turn some of these over to uh, this system to automatically control them. But for now, this is kind of like my manual control bag. I'm sure it's clear, but if it wasn't, um, it's the same thing. It's an inventory checker, this time on a pink chest, which is this control bag of mine. And uh, this happens to be the ore miner. So if I was to enable it, redstone goes off, this thing starts to run. And then if I want to turn it off, I do that. And the same with the resource miner and the same with this ore excavator. And it's pretty cool to have that kind of control, I think. I was out mining and my inventory was just full. I have these chat detectors set up that send a pulse into the processor. If I was to type dump, it um, brings items in just like that. And it puts them 
into this ender chest, which then goes back to my AE2 network, and it interfaces with this player chest. I've enabled it slot 9 to slot 26 to loop through, and anything in those slots, it dumps back to the base. So if I'm out mining or exploring, I can always send stuff back. It's great for um, loot, like looting dungeons. You get all these items. You're in a storage room. Um, I made this very, very early on. And this is slot 27. This one's special. Basically, what I've done here is if I'm out mining and I run out of power, like the scanner only has 23,000 RF, if I type, and you'll see the detector right here will actually turn on. Scanner. Nope, not scanner. Um, charge. And it takes the item. It pushes the item into the power cell. It's charged. And then after a minute or two, when I want to try it again, I can recall it back to my inventory. I thought that was a pretty slick little way to, uh, to do that. Of course, there's better ways to do that in this pack, especially now. I think I could build um, flux networks. It was just an excuse to play around with um, the processor and learn. I think it was some kind of looping function is what I was trying to learn. And this is the closure room. I've got an XNet system that handles just importing and exporting. Importing the fluids and the power and exporting the items to the controller room, which again is tied to AE2. And um, this way, these essences don't overfill my network, like plug up a drive or plug up AE2, because they're only going to store as many as they're allowed. That's a bad example, because Fire Essence I actually use as a backup for my base power, and it's probably ran out because of my um, blood magic issue from earlier, but everything else is maxed out. And if we look here, the system is actually running, and it's got power. No, it doesn't. It's not running, because we've dropped below 50%, so I think the, um, the Clocious Fish might have disabled this. See slot 45, slot 45, redstone breaker, and this is the main power into the whole system. Oh no, I guess uh, it hasn't turned off yet, but it will. It only does a scan for the power check every minute, so sometimes it might drop a bit before it shuts something off. But uh, yes, it's very important to turn this thing off. It's power hungry. So I want to have an array of jars, all 39 of them, I figured I'd have 13 on one row, 26, or another 13 equaling 26 in the middle row, and then another 13 on the top row equaling 39, and then have a probe connector on each one. Basically, you've got 16 colors with these probes that you can change. You can feed them to a common connector, and then each one can be its own redstone. And what I would do is I would split that 13 times. So this would be 13 colors, 13 colors again. 13 colors again, and um, based on whatever was getting requested, like let's say, hey, you know, this gets low, redstone signal drops below, I guess I changed it, what color is this? White and lime. Yeah, so three. So based on a redstone signal dropping too low, what I think I would do is I would have XNet powering items, or exporting items with the redstone card, and it would refill my metal and my per root, whatever that one is. I call it the copper one. I can't for <laughs> I can't say it. But uh, it would export it into this cooker. And then this thing would uh, refill the jars. And it's definitely not a requirement in this pack. I've just always kind of wanted to automate uh, Thomcraft. And I find I like magic mods a lot more if I get to automate them. It's a huge reason I like uh, Blood Magic more than I used to.